On this week's What the Fuck America, I literally interviewed the president. It definitely wasn't what I expected. Here's how it all went down. This is what I'm going through. Yes, I'm leaving everything like this. It's like, okay, I have outfit. I have jewelry. I have hair. I have medications to last me, realistically, like, to kill a small army. I have shoes, I have my wallet, I have my phone charger, I have my computer, I have my computer charger, I have headphones, I have a headphones charger, I have my Kindle, I have an external battery for my phone, and a cord for that. Sunglasses. Okay. I think, I think we're good. Today we're gonna be talking about cancel culture, except the fun kind, like student debt cancellation, the remix. The Biden administration rang us up on Thursday to say, hey, any chance you could come to Wisconsin on Monday to cover a super secret announcement the president is making? And I was like, you best believe I'll be there even if I have to forest gump myself, run all the way there. Obviously I took a plane, but that's where I was at emotionally. We landed in Milwaukee, but I slept literally the entire time. Yeah. I feel like a spring chicken. Let's get it. When the White House calls, you answer the freaking phone. You best believe that I was having a near panic attack in Mango, in Soho on Saturday, looking for a suit to wear, didn't find one. And the White House is emailing me that they need my passport number and my driver's license number. And I'm like, ah, I'm on public Wi-Fi. I can't do this. Coordinating with the White House is pretty insane. Like they really make sure all of their bases are covered at all times. I know you're like, wow, the White House base is covered? No way. We had to be really, really thorough in terms of what information we gave them, what equipment we were bringing with us, um, timing for literally everything. And then what do you know, like things can pop up at any moment because we're literally deplaning at the Milwaukee airport and they're like, get on a background call about the announcement and a, a, a call on background is basically like, we're gonna give you information to reporters that you can report on, but like you can't quote any of it. Uh, you can't say like who it's coming from. So you always attribute it to like senior White House officials. Um, and that's where like the, the, the groundwork gets laid around the stories that journalists will write. I hope I can get my head a little straight before tomorrow morning when we have to be there at 7 a.m. And you guys know me, morning. I'm like, can I come at nine? <laughs> Just kidding. We had a 90 minute drive ahead of us, so I figured we could get some actual work done because there wasn't a minute to lose, obviously. And thankfully, my mentor, El Jefe, the godfather, John Heilman was on a long drive of his own. Not only did he talk me off like any journalistic ledges I was about to fall over, he also just helped trim the fat that I didn't know even existed from the okay. encounter. Example, you don't have to tell the president who you are and why you're there. He already knows that. And I'm like, oh, duh. He also told me that five minutes with the president means one, mm -hmm. maybe two questions. Yeah. And if you can get him out of there in under 10 minutes, his staff yeah, will love you, you forever. Anyway, our Madison arrival awaits. Congress? <laughs> if I have to turn the car off, that would be good. <laughs> it's a Sunday night, everything is closed. We need to get dinner in the next 30 minutes, basically. So, and then go to bed because we have to be up at 5.30 in the morning. So we're on a tight schedule here. Obviously, I had to try this iconic Wisconsin beer. It was honestly a 10 out of 10. When my producer Kim and I were sitting at dinner, I felt finally like really affirmed that I wanted to ask the president about two things related to this new plan, potential legal challenges, and what this means for access to higher education overall. Just living at the Best Western in Madison, Wisconsin. There's a first time for everything, literally. Um, I think I could count on one hand the amount of times that I've been awake at this hour when I haven't, when I actually have gone to bed yet. Like, I've been awake at this hour because I've been out at this hour. Putting on makeup at this hour feels quite daunting. Like, look at this little thing. <laughs> Gonna hard pass on that one. This is that morning light that people are talking about that I've never before seen. I guess I get what you guys are saying. We're on our way at 6.50 a.m. to the venue where Biden will be giving his announcement on student debt relief. We just figured out that they're kind of dispatching uh, the Avengers all around the country. He's 
doing a presentation here. Doug Emhoff is doing one in Arizona. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris is somewhere else and the Secretary of Education will be doing the announcement in New York. I wonder if they're all gonna say the same thing. I really doubt that. I'm sure they all have personalized remarks if they were all repeating the same speech. That would be a little bit weird. We've made it to the university where he's speaking at and here's the first thing you see. We are testing how this shot looks. Getting all prepped. In this beautiful curtained room, it's like Eve's Klein blue. Just gorgeous. I'm your host. <laughs> it's about 8.15, 8.20. We've already accomplished so much today. The reason we're not inside right now is Secret Service is doing a sweep of the building, saw a dog even, never felt safer in my life. So how to kill the next two hours? We're gonna read up on what this plan looks like before we get inside and hear it from the president himself. And I'm sure we'll have many questions. While we wait, it's a really good time to talk about Biden v. Nebraska, which is the whole reason we're here in Wisconsin in the first place. In 2022, Biden took his first go at student loan forgiveness through something called the HEROES Act. But that plan was challenged by six Republican attorneys general and ultimately in a 6-3 decision with three liberal judges dissenting, the Supreme Court decided that the Biden administration had overstepped its authority. Anyway, coming back to a story I'm telling about meeting presidents. What? about 10 years old was coming to do a book signing at the bookstore by my house in LA. My mom and I waited in line for literally three hours, got pizza and everything. By the time we got to the front, like they tried to scoot in someone in front of us and my mom went crazy and Secret Service was like, lady, you're gonna have to calm down. But he had the, the only thing I remember about it, he had literally the bluest eyes I had ever seen in my life. The second was when one of my half brothers was graduating high school, he was in the same graduating class as Malia Obama. And we got to the ceremony late and we were in the last row and we were like, oh, we're literally in the last row. And just before it started, uh, they added a row of seats behind us and we were like, hmm, that's funny. I wonder who's gonna sit there. And literally the entire Obama family slides in behind us. So the graduation is going on over here and I'm like this the whole time. <laughs> and one of the people we were with, like my half brother's like kind of god brother vibe, um, turned around and said to President Obama at the time, hey, you got a nice haircut. Where do you get your haircut? And Obama classic looks at him and goes, I got a guy who comes to my house. We we're like, I got a guy who comes to my house. That's, does it get better than that? It was like insane. So, but this will be the first handshake of them all, you know? So we'll see. Are you happy with the fit? I'm happy with the fit. After all the laboring, blood, sweat, tears, like literal tears I went through, I think we landed in the right space. So this was really the only time I got nervous, like literally all day waiting in this big ass line. And it wasn't because of these kind of scary turkeys. And it wasn't because the wind was messing with my hair. So much for that. I know, I love that. Or because my nose was running. It's because it was the first time I was feeling some imposter syndrome, waiting in line with all of these other professional journalists who have been doing this forever. But there was no time to even really sweat it because we had our final and kind of like officially official security check to go through with the Secret Service before after all that waiting, we got our credentials. Let's go. All right, we are back in our little playpen. And honestly, the only things we've left to do are choose a lip color and not have a panic attack. And honestly, I'm feeling pretty confident in my ability to get both of those things done. Famous last words though. We got kicked out of the club again. We're back in the waiting area. <laughs> this is just island hopping, presidential style. So I'm taking this opportunity to eat my popcorn chicken bites sort of second breakfast from Walmart. And I don't know how good they are, but they are popcorn chicken bites from Walmart. So like we can survive that, hopefully. Maybe I'll ask Joe if he wants one. We actually don't know what time the interview is going to happen, which I think is good. Keeps me on my toes a little bit, but also I'm like cool, calm, collected right now. Cool as a freaking cucumber. All right, you guys, it's almost go time. Air Force One touchdown a couple of minutes ago. Now it just comes down to believing in myself, I guess, and all the work that I put in to get here. I'm not gonna be emotional till later. I don't wanna fog the mug, as they say. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm good. 
great. Student debt forgiveness was struck down by the Supreme Court in June of last year. Okay, so we just interviewed the president. It just happened right now. And now we're running to go watch him speak. So that just happened. <laughs> Not even 20 minutes later, it was like there he was, the president of the United States giving a speech. Now, thanks to what we're doing, that student debt is no longer holding you back. <laughs> Okay, so the main focus of this plan is runaway interest, which is like when someone owes more than they even borrowed in the first place. This plan also would allow any borrower, regardless of how much money they make, to cancel up to $20,000 in interest. Lower income borrowers could even have all of their interest forgiven. Folks! The administration took a much more traditional route with this debt relief plan. They went through something called the Higher Education Act. If this plan moves forward as intended, the Biden administration estimates that 30 million Americans will have benefited from some form of student loan relief. As the president exited, we ran to catch our breath and catch up with the cosmos. We hit those sick eclipse glasses and got to see the celestial phenomenon thanks to some very kind White House staffers. <laughs> like, wow. They couldn't get Neil deGrasse Tyson here today I with know. you guys? Come on. No, that'd be nice. <laughs> I can call him if you want. <laughs> it's too late. Uh -huh. We've just dropped in the footage and like, hello? Oh. Are we having a blast <laughs> or what? I'm just sitting here now thinking about that on Thursday at 5.30 p.m. We did not yet know that we'd be in Madison, Wisconsin. And in four days, sorry, three days, we managed to get our equipment, our mental health, our physical appearance together, fly over here to interview the president. How do you go back from here? <laughs> where, where do you go from here? What happens now, literally? Who are we now? So this man, this man being the president of the United States, Actually, just gave me a little handhold, gave me a little hand squeeze, looked at me after the interview and said, and what's your story? Which, you know, I'm, I'm a girl full of stories. Suddenly, the mind was blank. And I said, well, we're from New York. And he was like, and we're in New York. And he, he said, I said, Brooklyn, I live in Brooklyn. I said, well, three of my granddaughters, like we got a whole then backstory from him, which was like amazing. His team was like, He's wrapping up. We need to take him to the stage to give a speech. But he was seemed well intended to spend the rest of the day chatting in the room with us, asking about our lives. You just kind of walk in the room with him and he's just standing there. All of a sudden he flashes a great big smile and I was not even nervous anymore. He was not that I was really that nervous to begin with. <laughs> Kim was. <laughs> um, but we worked through it. We did a lot of uh, power posing in the in the backstage area. He's a very calming presence, which people have said about him for decades, but until you experience it yourself, like you don't really understand the effect that it has on you when you're inevitably, you know, high emotions, heart pounding to meet the president of the United States. I felt very grounded and I felt very capable, which that was gonna be my biggest question. Was I capable of doing this? And the answer was yes. After classically struggling to find my way home, Head east toward West Ronson Avenue, then turn right onto West Ronson Avenue, and rushing to this airport hotel to do some voiceover action for the videos that we put out. Like literally, what is going on in here? I was left with these questions. What will this bill look like when it comes out of the public comment period? Can the administration get this done and get relief to Americans before the November election? And mainly, how much more insufferable am I going to be now that I've interviewed the president? I guess we'll find out. Finally going to get snacks, even though half of my bag is already filled with snacks. 